I'm happy to be able to introduce Joy Taylor. She's a teacher consultant at something called WAVE, which is the Washtenaw Alliance for Virtual Education. And she's on the program right now. Hi, Joy. Hi, Mitch. How are you? Good, thanks. What, what is WAVE? Well, WAVE is an uh, alternative school. Um, it's a consortium of Washtenaw County. And what we do, we take in um, students from Dexter, Manchester, Saline, Lincoln, Ypsilanti, um, all these areas where, and we take in students who may not have been able to adapt to the traditional school setting, and they come to our school, and we're able to work with them on a more individual or smaller um, smaller basis. Yeah. Now, I understand that uh, technology plays a part in this as well to help sort of personalize that learning for the kids. Can you give us an example of that? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you how I use technology. I use technology in different ways to personalize learning for my students. I use Google Video, Zoom, Google Docs, Google Slides, Video, TED Talks, and other technologies. And I'll give you an example. I work with my students individual and in virtual classes. I call my students via Google Video, and we can work together on assignments. Um, when I Google Video them, it's like we're fa- we can see each other face-to-face, and it's like I'm next to them. I share my screen with them. They share their screen with me. They, I have them share their Google document with me while they're working on the assignment, and it's like me being right there next to them. So I can work side-by-side side with them, and I can share examples and draw charts. I also co-teach in the virtual class with the teacher. And as she teaches and we interact with the class, I'm gauging students' engagement in the class with their conversations and chats and assignments. Now, if I notice that a student needs my attention, I'm able to turn off my camera and work with the students via chat, um, a text, or call to see if the students are lost and if they need my assistance or additional clarification or scaffolding or even extended time on the assignment or task that's being asked of them. Now, this sounds very effective under the COVID restrictions that we're currently dealing with. Hopefully, we won't be dealing with them for much longer. When we go back to a more traditional setting, do you use technology quite as much, or is it more of a you know human one-on-one interaction? Well, actually, we use both. Uh, because virtual is in our name, but we we offer all of our content online, but we also offer a lot of face to face interaction. Um, we are we offer some face to face classes where there's no more than thirteen or fifteen students. We also offer a, a open area where we have tables where teachers teach different content areas, um, and students can come to those tables. And the tables are set up with no more than seven students, and the teachers working with each student. And we have tables set up all around, and we also have where Teachers have the ability to work one-on-one with students face-to-face as well. Hmm. So we work virtually as well as we're working face-to-face. And also we have online coaches on in the evening hours, and they're online Monday through Saturday. And they're able to work with students during the evening hours when we're not face-to-face during that, those daytime hours. What are, what are some of the common denominator problems or challenges that you see after you've worked with you know, a fairly large number of at-risk students. What's a, what's a common issue that's blocking them from, uh, you know, advancing as far as fast or as far as they could? Well, you know, I think some of the biggest things that are facing them, um, distraction, overconsumption of social media, I believe mental health and access to quality health care. Um, I believe even lack of diversity in school, them just being able to connect with teachers. I think at some point some connection was lost with their teachers or with their schools or they were overlooked and they weren't being they weren't tapping in with um, school uh, staff. And so I feel like that has it has been a disconnect with our students and I believe that our program with our program we are able to have more personalized relationships with our students and we learn about our students so that we can help them. So that students, they encounter a lot of barriers, and a lot of barriers are just even, you know, the mental health, and a lot of our students are even helping at home um, mm-hmm. bring in income for their households. So those are some of the barriers that our students encounter. You yourself, I understand, uh, had, a, had a significant uh, relationship with the first African-American teacher that, that you had. It made an impact on you. Uh, talk about that for a second in terms of how you have applied what you went through to what you're trying to do now. Okay, well, and that's why I think diverse representation in the teaching profession is um, important because I believe that um, our world is 
diverse, and our students need to learn how to communicate, work with, and value people of different backgrounds. And also, I believe our students really need to see representation of themselves as well as others. Boys need to see male teachers as role models as well as female teachers. And it's impactful when a student can connect with a teacher. So for me, my first teacher who made the first impression on me was in fifth grade when I was attending Coleman A. Young for a couple of weeks before going on to Lunnington. And I had a teacher named Miss Sheffield. She made an impression on me. And one reason I felt like I connected with her is that in my eyes, she dressed up every day in her Sunday best. She wore, had a professional role. She had she dressed in a dress or a suit every day. And for me, I, I was able to see a black woman in a professional role. And that really stood out for me. She connected with me as well as her other students. I was able to see myself with the woman who stood in front of me, and she inspired me to want to become a professional black woman. So she was the first black teacher that really stood out for me. And, you know, we connected, and that made me want to do what I want to do, mm -hmm. what I'm doing now. I'm sure you're inspiring other kids in a very similar way. Thank you, Joy, for giving so. us uh, an, in an insight to this at WAVE. Continue the good work. Thank you.